we're being audio and video recorded. And Laura, can you please take the floor? Um, Councillor Sharon here. Councillor Bidwell here. Councillor Klein here. Councillor Nash Pre present. I do not see any public for public comment. I'm not there. Um, so moving on, we have two sets of minutes that um, we can approve. So this is from our February 27, 2018. Meeting, and then we had a special meeting on March 5th. Is there a motion? I would make a motion to approve the I'll session from both February 27th and March 5th. Okay. I have to move them as a group first. Oh. Do I have to move them as a group? I don't know. You're listed as one item. All those in favor of moving them as a group? Okay. Aye. Okay. 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 Um, so motion um, to approve them, and it was seconded. Any discussion on them? Nope. And all those in favor of both of approving both of them? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Um so moving on to the two items that I have on the agenda. I'm actually if there unless there is um, an objection, I'm gonna reverse the order of them, if that's okay. And first discuss this sort of vague thing I've called quarter term committee check-in and discussion of ideas and goals for the remainder of the term. Um, and then after that, it, I think it could nicely maybe segue to talking about the Senate task force report. So, um, so I wanted to have this discussion because we have not had something referred to us in the past I think two meetings and have canceled them, which is fine. But when we came to this third meeting, um, I, I thought it warranted having a discussion about um, things we, we might want to talk about or work on in this committee and sort of more broadly what the, the scope and the jurisdiction is of the committee. Um, and also want to take a, a moment to sort of talk about what could be referred to us, and I know that Councillor Bidwell had sort of expressed some um, some curiosity about why there were some things that could fall under our jurisdiction that I've sort of maybe waved off or or hadn't um, had referred to us. So I just want to kind of talk about my thoughts on that and why I made that decision, get feedback, and see what you all thought. Um, so to that point, we we've, there have been a bunch of zoning items that have come through that certainly fall under um, what this committee does and could have been referred to us. I didn't ask for them to be referred, and my reason was that having sat in the previous term on both community resources and legislative matters, I sat through multiple situations where the same thing was referred to us, and then it would get put to legislative matters, and then it would go to council, and it, I found it very repetitive and redundant, and potentially unnecessary for some of these things. Now, if there was a zoning item that had uh, more significant public interest, or we knew that there was um, a desire to have more community discussion about it, I certainly would be very much in favor of having it come here, and that would kind of create more space and time to have community discussion. But some of these other items, particularly because we meet on the third Monday of the month, Legislative Matters meets on the second Monday of the month. So we can be in a situation, the council's on the first and third Thursday. So we can, sometimes it's a situation where something gets referred to us and then it has to wait until, it essentially drags it out many more weeks if it's um, if it's at that council meeting that isn't, the, if it's a third council meeting, does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, and I've just been through, I've sat through many meetings where Carolyn's come in and like very, thoughtfully and diligently presented to us, and then a couple weeks later presents to legislative matters, and then a week later presents to the council. And I found it to be perhaps not necessary, but again, I'm totally up, open to discussion. Anyone can refer at any time. So those are my thoughts on that. Councilor Bidwell, I know you'd sort of raised that question with me, does that? Yeah, and it, 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 it was in the context, obviously, of zoning. Right. You know, what do we, what zoning matters right. do we, and what do we not? And, I guess in some ways it's also related to sometimes some confusion on my part as to the purview of legislative matters. To what extent is it a technical 
review right. uh, in terms of um, both the procedural stuff leading up to that point and just as a properly crafted in consultation with the solicitor and all that. At one point, I thought that was a primarily a legislative measure, mm -hmm. but clearly, I, I guess I don't know if legislative matters has evolved to more get into the substance because other committees are not, or you know, or or uh, whether legislative matters sees its role as being as involved in the substance of the pending ordinance as the um, the, the technicality. That's an interesting question. And as I'm no longer on legislative matters, I um, I'm not. I'm not sure I could answer it. I'll just also note, as you know, there was a change in the chair, and so it could be that it's a different style. So um, that might be. I, I, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying one is yeah. right in my view. I, I, I'm just seeing clarity. I think would be helpful. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna look at the um, description of the letters. Yeah. Well, yeah, I looked at it at one point too. It did. It, 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 I, my recollection is that it's broad enough it, that it could cover anything. Yeah, I have it right in front of me too. I'm going to read it a little easier. So the jurisdiction is upon referral, uh, the committee shall have the power to make recommendations on ordinances, orders, resolutions, and the rules of the city council. Such recommendations shall be made in consultation with the city solicitor. Um, the committee may choose to be the last committee to review any matter that is also referred to another council committee. The committee shall not be required to wait to receive the report of any executive commission. That's pretty much it. So yeah, it's very broad. So it doesn't talk about substance per se versus substance versus technical. technical. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but so you know that that sort of opens us up to thinking about what our mission is and what you know what we want this committee to be, um, and what we're here to do if things aren't being referred to us. And so. That's why I wanted to have everyone kind of give some thought to it and um, and maybe come see if you have some ideas about things that you're interested in working on or how you'd like to structure the remainder of this term in this committee. And um, I don't think we can't, we're not going to go into like the substance of an idea now because it's not on the agenda, but um, if there are things that we're interested in pursuing, we can put them on the July 16th agenda or, or kind of schedule them for the future. So, um, so I don't know if people have some ideas they want to talk, start talking about, or I can give, sort of talk about different things that I have been thinking about. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> the chair um, recognizes the chair. <laughs> so um, we could engage more with the uh, city departments and multi-member bodies. Uh, Councilor Klein and I are um, are veterans from a now defunct committee uh, called SSVCR, which is Social Services, Veterans, Recreation, and Culture. It was a little lot jammed in there. And um, that committee sort of rotated through not only department heads, but also different um, social service agencies and organizations in Northampton. And I'm sort of very cognizant that that's not really what I'd like this committee to do. I don't think, one, it's not, it's not an organization's job to come and, you know, report to us. Um, although, but city departments, we can ask for information requests. That definitely falls within um, what we can do in committee. So I think it it's, would be good to engage more, but I just want to be a little bit careful about not having sort of on a rotating basis <laughs> where you would kind of go through a whole there would be like a list and every month one or two would come and present and then you'd like start that cycle over again and I don't really want to do that um, but so that's been my hesitation uh, before but so um, department heads that fall you know would certainly make sense for us to work with would be to have Terry Masterson come in we haven't heard from Terry in a while. Um, not since I think he presented when we were in the middle of the committee study request. Um, Brian Foote of the Arts Council, um, Wayne or someone else from Planning and Sustainability, Peg who does community development block grants and housing, uh, Peg Keller, Wayne Fighting. Um, and then 
then in terms of the committees and commissions, there's the Housing Partnership, and CONSCOM, and Energy and Sustainability, Licensing Commission, Commission Public Shade Tree Commission. Um, these are all you know, different to the organizations that we can engage with more if we wanted to. Um, other things I've thought of, we could engage more with state legislation, which is sort of what made me think that we, could, we should talk about this um, Senate report, which also mirrors, or doesn't mirror, but is similar to plan that we did. So um, I thought that would be kind of an a interesting foray into doing that. So we could, um, we could follow more closely certain um, state issues or things that are in subcommittee or sub what certain subcommittees are, hand are working on. Um, and, or we can also <coughs> pick a topic we're interested in and, um, and produce an information request that's maybe a little more broad. So if we wanted, you know, if we wanted to think more about uh, the casino opening, we could engage multiple, um, either people <coughs> in the city hall, but also other um, community members who might have interesting things to tell us about that. Um, same thing with, if we, you know, maybe wanted to talk about public art, we could um, engage with, with Brian, but also we could talk to him. I know we, these are sort of, I feel like we're going around with previous topics we've already explored, but um, we could try again to find a way to engage on those. So those are my main ideas. Do you all have any thoughts? I have a question in yeah. response to your, your brainstorming there. I appreciate how much thought you've put into it, and I'm wondering if you can articulate a little bit more to what end you would you know, tackle any of these things? Mm -hmm. Would it be because we would want to originate ordinance? Would it be because we want to refer matters somewhere? I mean, what, I mean, it, it's an interesting kind of um, tension because when we were on the SSBCR and we would have people come in and give us these kind of periodic reports, it didn't, it was wonderful for us to be updated and to know about all these things city but it didn't translate into anything beyond the three members that sat on that committee so I guess I would just want to know a little bit more what your vision would be for the potential of doing any of these pieces that you're suggesting right um, well it's a good question and I think that's why I'm hoping that if there are things that any of us or us collectively are really interested in pursuing that um, it will give it more of a life and a body, right? So that if, because um, I, I don't know the answer, but if there's something that, you know, I mean, I, there, for example, there's a community art idea that I've, that's been rattling around. And if that was something that could be explored in here, it could maybe help bring it to life for me. So I'm kind of hoping that as a committee, we each have things that we're interested in that could then um, sort of originate here in some way. So kind of like a brainstorming body or something like that and see what we come up with. And that seems to be kind of a counter to this idea that I think Councilor Bidwell is suggesting that we're actually dealing with relative, uh, relevant ordinance that we're taking more of that ordinance on. So that's, you know, not that we would have to do one to the exclusion of the other, but um, it's a little bit of a different focus. And yeah, I, 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 I certainly wouldn't see them as mutually exclusive. I think <coughs> either or both could be, could be appropriate. This is much the same question we've had in city services. Do we just bring in the parade yeah. of department heads and, and I've, some of us have been trying to get away from that and make a topic related. If there's a, an interesting topic that might involve three or four departments and some outside organizations. See, I envy city services because at least you know you you um, you do appointments, so that's like I know there's there's like a clear thing 
that you can hang your hat on there. Oh my God, if that's what we have to hang your hat on. It's, it's at least a reason for being. Where, you know, I think, and maybe that, this is part of like sort of a larger philosophical conversation about like what do these committees do? What do we want them to do? And they were fairly recently reconfigured. Do they work? Do they make sense? I think we can talk like really honestly about that. And if, and if they don't, they can be reworked again or, I mean, I think we, we want to avoid having what happened. I think how like SSBCR came to be is that there were many more committees and then they felt like they weren't doing anything and then they just all kept getting folded into right. this if one. If five committees aren't doing anything, if you look all together, then you have one big committee not doing right. anything. Right, right, exactly. <clears throat> I guess it brings up a philosophical and practical question for me about, you know, what our role as city councilors is. And are we just creating ordinance, or are we more <clears throat> activists, or organizers, community like liaisons. influencers, yeah. liaisons? Um, and so I guess I want to ask that question and really have us grapple with that, so that we can maybe it gives us a little bit more of a mandate in terms of what we should actually. If, I mean, my answer to that question would definitely be the latter, that I think, I think we can use our, our, our position as counselors and as members of the committee to, to, to have more inquisitive and open-ended and brainstorming conversations that it might, in some cases, to your question about purpose, could, in some cases, lead to an ordinance or a resolution. In other instances, uh, particularly if we decide it's an issue that we really want to put out there, uh, public awareness in and of itself can, can be, can be a, a, a worthwhile effort to, to just give a specific example. What I've been thinking about, you mentioned it too, is casinos about to open. And I noted that tomorrow morning, the mayor and the head of the consultant that is, or the head consultant doing this, been retained to do this marketing study on how to promote uh, Northampton to folks otherwise being drawn to the casino, uh, doing some kind of report to the DNA tomorrow. Well, you know, I kind of like to have have this this committee or some 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 committee of the, of the council be briefed on on that report. And you know, I guess it certainly fits under right, it. Certainly does tourism, local right. business, economic development. It would, right. it would, and and that would be an opportunity not just for us to become a little bit better informed on where this is all headed and are there any findings that we might want to take into consideration. But um, that would be an example of, of something that could be put, we put it on the agenda and we promote it. Put it out there a little bit to see if we'll let it let it be known that if anyone wants to uh, hear a little more about uh, what this city's marketing approach might be in response to the casino. Learn about it and talk about it. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something else that um, came up when we were discussing the charter earlier this year that might be relevant here, and that is um, this concept of how we um, communicate with and kind of liaise with the mayor's office. And um, the reason that what you're talking about, Councilor Bidwell, um, reminds me of that is that uh, following social following the mayor on social media, you see all of this um, stuff that he does. I mean, every day he's at another dedication or um, some kind of event, and frequently I don't know about those things until I see them on the mayor's um, social media. And I guess it, it it really it makes sense to me that we would be engaged, kind of like this meeting with the DNA, this report to the DNA, that we would be engaged in those same kinds of things, and that we would the council would also have a presence at these events. Um, so I'm wondering if we also could just serve somehow as um, the liaison committee with the mayor's office, so that we get kind of updates about all of the things that are unfolding in the city. Um, I'm not sure what that translates to in terms of what we would do other than kind of show up to more things when possible. 
but just you know sharing them with our colleagues and on the whole council and being able to kind of engage more on all different levels within the city. Or even to feel that they're happening is useful and we can also share that information. I'm, I'm sort of laughing because I had that, ex this, that experience this morning where I did a field trip with Bridge Street as a parent and I showed up and the, and the mayor and the superintendent and Representative Seibach and Representative Kulik were all there. Um, and there was a lot of press and it was a, a, an event around the community gardens. Um, and I, I think about sort of honoring Peter Cocott and uh, the work that he'd done on it, and particularly around um, education, and so having a class trip be there. And, there it is. Um, and so I had that, you know, I, I got off the school bus, and I'm like, I guess. Even the, kind of the grand opening of businesses and things that yeah. have been things. <clears throat> Recently, the mayor posted on his feed that um, he was at the cut the ribbon at Scott, the grand reopening of Scott, right. which is in Ward 7 right, right. right from my house, and I actually didn't even know about it. Right. So mm -hmm. it would be really nice if I, as a council from Ward 7, mm -hmm. would be at this thing, because people tend to reach out to the mayor's office and less, I think, to the council. But if we have that communication with the mayor's office when it's relevant to the mm -hmm. councilor or to all of us, it would be great if we could be engaged with that kind of stuff. And I think that's really good for business, too, for the business community. Our connection to the business community. I don't know if that happens a lot, especially. I just want to add the, the bike tunnel thing. Yeah, yeah that's another one. I was like, right? no, I how did I not know right. about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think we've all had yeah. those. Oh, really? I just. I would like to have been there. Well, especially if they're like answering like 80 emails related to when is it going right. to open, <laughs> you know. And then finally, it mysteriously opens, you know, because the, the state, state officials are there. The state officials two days after the election open, open it up. Yeah. 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 And so then, you know, I'm emailing people and we're getting it out on the different hosts. Right. And, uh, but then there was an, actually right. a, a, a class an event. Yeah. 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 So. Yes. So we've all had this experience. We've all had the experience. Well, I envisioned Ward going through the tunnel to meet Ward 1 and shaking hands. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it had been holding tight. Because it's right down in the middle. Like, teeter on bikes <laughs> and reach across. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> spike. <laughs> right, below the track. Went above, you know. OK, so. We're that's, all singing the same tune. Yeah, OK. Well, we can explore that, and I don't, yeah, we can, I can, uh, have a conversation and see see what's said or whether it, I mean actually Laura can we bring you into this for a second? Sure. Um, do you I mean I know that you always pass on information that comes through you. Do you feel like businesses or organizations don't necessarily know to email you for the council? Do they do you think if they send something to the mayor's office they assume it'll be sort of disseminated to the government structure? They may well, because I don't really get that much correspondence right. when you find the council of ongoing community events. Right. Right. So that may be the case. So you know, I got a whole lot more than this one for the Minister of Office and stuff. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Sort of general interest yeah. events. Okay. So, um, yeah, they may well right. assume that it's distributed from maybe not the right. same separation and so much. Mm -hmm. Right. Legislative and executive and that plays out. It could just be that all it, it takes is to sort of inform mm -hmm. the court or somebody in the office that we would also like to be informed or to make right. sure to pass it on. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm going to have the role for this committee specifically. I'm going to have to this committee to set up this so that maybe there is some way to complain to the case. I like the idea of you mentioning business on this. It's true. I mean, this is where I found a lot of this. Right. I'm always very surprised that I don't. And, and it, would be, it would be nice to know more of those and be able to some of us to see our own welcome to town. We just got that invitation to the office. I don't know what they were. Boyd was that sort of took the initiative yeah. to send that to you guys. She's a former so, reporter, so I think she's. Exactly. <laughs> Most <laughs> folks wouldn't think that. I mean, I forward do. everything that I come, I make the assumption that it's really intended for you guys. So, I forward everything. 
Yeah. I think there may be an assumption though by people that if they send something to the mayor's office that it will filter down to all right. branches of government. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 I think that's a, an important conversation. No. And it's to, to take it in a similar sort of philosophical direction. Um, I would like to get to the point in our separation of powers um, wariness sometimes, yeah. where there was a little greater comfort level uh, in the mayor or department heads coming here in a more brainstorming or conversational right. style as opposed to in the context of a specific ordinance that they're right. defending um, or promoting. Or but generally, to generally to the council. And that would certainly apply to this committee and others. That um, I've, I've, I've argued for some earlier, more free-ranging conversations with the mayor in the budget process. Um, early on, right. some bigger conceptual ideas to be adopted before, OK, we'll react to the 400-page document. I think there's various areas where, you know, and I understand the charter and separation of powers and the desire to really draw those lines um, tightly, but I would uh, I would like to explore ways that we could, without violating the spirit or the terms of the charter, have a somewhat more collaborative, early in the process type of conversation. Okay. 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 Any other ideas? That might be a good segue into back to what you started with, so share the idea of you know do we want to have on a rotating basis department heads come? You know it didn't work in the style that we did it. I think in the SSBCR committee, I don't. It sounds like maybe it's not totally working in the city services committee. I'm not quite sure. But is there some way in which it would be useful for us to have that access? The question that you asked right. earlier, and um, maybe more in the spirit of not just report back, but brainstorming together with these folks about how we can serve. Are there pieces of legislation that they feel could be useful coming from our, from the council as opposed to the mayor's office? I mean, what what are the ways that we can actually make it? process not just them coming in kind of you know kind of talking at us or reporting back to us. Yeah, and I think so I think where it gets a little bit messy um, is I think it does sort of need to be approached as an information request or that's sort of how the charter is written, right? So um, so I think if it's sort of like idea driven, like if there's something that we want to know about, and we, even if it's just, we're curious about this topic, and then hoping that we can have kind of more of a open, maybe brainstorming conversation. Yeah. Um, but as opposed to how SSPCR was, which was more like, you just come, tell us what you're doing, like what right. you're working on, right. right? So I think if we have something specific, we're interested in knowing. Well, that brings me back to you know, that topic. Right. I'd like the casino. Right. So I still think that's a good one. Where it could be, I suppose it would be up to the mayor. Those who would want to bring, but, but we suggest it would be good to hear what Terry's thinking about it is. Or we certainly want to hear um, the, the direction that this market is, effort is, is, is taking and how that fits in with. Uh, the arts marketing that is already going on in the chamber and the DNA marketing efforts. In, in some ways, it's kind of a return to our topic two years ago, you know, of, uh, marketing and promotion of right. the arts, but more generally the downtown. Right. And I, I, think, I think sort of a, a, an update on the coordination among different entities in the marketing and promotion of downtown. Topic and certainly the casino piece. Okay. And or or another would be um, there's various perspectives on on sort of an updated 
look at seeing the downtown front. Mm -hmm. To have Terry talk to I mean, elaborate a little bit on some of those reports. Are they quarterly or are they every six months? I think, I, I was thinking six months, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's see where we are in the yeah. cycle. And, you know, and, and also, I think, between the mayor's office and the realtors, we are beginning to get a sense of what might be an impact on downtown of marijuana. Right. So, um, this might be an appropriate forum to at least get an update. I'm looking at the list um, under jurisdiction, uh, it lists a bunch of things that could be within our purview, and um, several of them are things that I would love to have more information about. One of the things that's come up repeatedly in Ward 7 and I think other places are zoning-related issues. Um, one with relation to the small farming and as it relates to the um, establishment of cultivation I do wonder about the possibility of reconsidering really zoning along those lines. Um, it would be great to have some kind of conversation you know, with Carol Mish or Wayne about that. Um, and the other zoning question that has come up is uh, looking at, I'm not sure if it's density exactly, but what you got involved in on Lake Street and Ward 7 about, um, I guess, I don't know. Infill. It's infill, but there it's kind of specifics of infill. In any case, just like to the say the conversion that there are, of sorry, the conversion of um, garages or uh, creating other sort of small units. Yeah, and but it's more specific in terms of you know what sizes are allowed or mm -hmm. just all kinds of very specific questions. But in any case, I'm just suggesting that. Um, it might be useful for us to kind of um, talk with somebody about the zoning at some point. Um, I guess I can say this because we're on camera, but I, together with um, Councilor Nash and possibly another councilor, are looking at um, doing a, a piece of work around um, environmental issues and use of uh, pesticides and herbicides in the city. And, it could be really useful, I think, for us to engage with that a little bit, but it might actually come under the jurisdiction of what we're hoping to establish um, by a resolution. So it might be happening anyway, but talk to DPW folks or hear from DPW folks about how municipal um, areas are managed in terms of pesticides and herbicides and uh, integrated pest management and, and different approaches. Um, Housing and affordability, I think, with the two new um, buildings that are going up on Pleasant Street, it could be really useful for us to reach outside of city government, talk to the organizations that are behind those, and just to understand more how that's all unfolding and how it's going, um, what's available to community members, where they are in the process of um, the, the, the lottery process, so just looking at these, I do think that there are very um, relevant things that we can kind of maybe pull stuff out of. But again, my question is, you know, to what end are we doing it so that the community can come and get updated? Are we doing it with an eye towards, oh, is there some kind of tweaking of ordinance that we need to do? I don't, I don't know exactly. But those are kind of some of the topics that stood out to me in looking at this list. Good list. It's a good list, mm -hmm. and you know I think in particular you, you mentioned a few things that you're interested in working on, and so if this could help with your information gathering, you know why not use this committee in that way? Mm. The only, yeah. So then it just becomes a concern about open meeting law always, but so at, when you're outside a committee, you mentioned that you and Councilor Nash are working on something. So just have to be then mindful about any other counselors. If were, I, I'm just saying that if it was another counselor on this committee, you couldn't work with three people on something 
from this committee. But. Mm. Um, I, I do think that's a good list, Councilor Klein, and housing and affordability, for example. Um, yes, we're all proud of uh, once once these open, once and we, and we have more affordable housing coming, don't chill. Right. What our what our percentage is going to be in relation to the ten percent? What other terms of consider a benchmark that we will exceed? But I, we don't want to rest on our laurels. It'd be very interesting. There's there's not that many developable sites left in this town, but it'd be interesting to have a sort of a longer range. So where where are we headed over the next five years right. in terms of affordable housing, uh, given that we've got this big spike right now? But what's uh, you know between Valley CDC and community builders and Peg Keller and others? Yeah. Who's called me find your number? Oh, it, it, no, it, no. It, it used to be half. 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 Yeah. half. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars it paid to come to a way from it. In any event. To have that, I think that'd be, I think that'd be very interesting to have that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, would it produce uh, substantive ideas that might lead to tweaks to ordinance? I don't know, maybe. Might it, might it generate a little more public awareness of what's in the pipeline and, and, and the opportunities to work with some of the nonprofits that are thinking about these things. Could, could be so long. The um, open space plan, the final version of the open space plan was just published and um, it's large, largely non-controversial except for a clause about hunting and both of the areas that are truly being considered for hunting are in Ward 7, and so it's a big topic in Ward 7, but um, the Conservation Commission is really the only um, public uh, commission or board that is tasked with um, holding a hearing and making a final decision. And um, I'm actually wondering if we can preempt that, only, not preempt, but kind of join them in that, partner with them in that, and maybe it's something that we want to, as a, as a potential community resource, mm -hmm. um, something we want to hold a hearing on or um, have someone come and speak to us about hunting and its effects, its lack thereof, whatever. But that would have to happen fairly quickly right. if we do that because um, it's, it's, we don't know exactly when yet. They haven't set the hearing, but it's, it's happening very soon because they have to make a decision about it. Um, well, again, that would also certainly fit under our categories. Would so? Do you feel like that would have to happen at, at the July sixteenth meeting? I think we should probably check with Kevin Lake, uh, the chair of the Comscom, to find out when they're thinking of doing the hearing. Because if they're going to wait until the fall, which is a possibility, um, I'm I'm actually thinking about. There are a lot of people that are interested and want to come, and if we do a meeting, if we do it in July, I'm just worried that it wouldn't actually draw enough people uh -huh. that want to be heard around it. So if we have a little bit of leeway, I might want to do it in the fall. Okay. But are you have to check with Kevin Mike about it. Okay. Are you in contact with him about this issue, or would you like me to contact him? I, um, I'm part of an organizing group, and members of the organizing group are in touch with him. I can check and okay. I can know um, what they find out from because somebody else is tasked with Directly with Mr. Okay. Great. Yes. Hello, I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, you, you guys are full of great ideas. I've, I've been sitting here going, oh, I'm thinking, what? I'm usually really good at brainstorming, and the two of you are doing a great job of it. So, um, okay, cool. so thank you. Um, you know, so the, the, the model where this committee, I think, did its best work or all of the committee structure in general had to do with the retail marijuana, where we took on, you know, we had Netta speak to us, city services had the, had, uh, the Board of Health and uh, the police department come in. And so we kind of broke it up and we had all of these different venues to, you know, uh, to look at an issue from. And, um, and I think too often we don't take advantage of that. Um, and, um, 
So it's just, it, it all ends up landing at legislative matters, which is kind of the catch all. And then, you know, and I have to say that I, I sometimes feel like, I mean, my, when, when I first joined legislative matters, I was like, oh, this is where we look at the letter of the law. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at what the language is, we're, we're evaluating all of the work up to this point before it goes to council. And, um, and that I, I think that sometimes it, it becomes a place where, it's, it's a, a place where it gets pre-vetted before it goes to council. And, and that um, I, I, I just think it gets a little off course sometimes around that. Um, but by doing that, it, it takes away from what, you know, community re resources and, I can't remember these names, community re resources and city services do. That, you know, that some of that needs to be delegated, some of that discussion needs to be consciously delegated to us. So, um, and, and I think retail marijuana was a great example of that. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the one, the, the, the conversation that I think that I, we need to engage in and that, um, and I don't know if it's in our jurisdiction or if it's in uh, city services or where it resides, but it's, it's that one we tried to have issue by issue around the way our police in the community relate, you know, that there's there's a lot of tension there. And that it, you know, I, and I, 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 I just wait for the next thing to come down the pipe where, you know, that, it, that there's gonna be some uh, tweak in policy with the police department or some new equipment, or there's gonna be, there's just, I, I think that it, and, and we had talked about it as we, we're wrapping up one of those votes, the, the idea of having some sort of discussion. And, um, and that I'm not sure if it fits in with this committee, but I think if we can front load the discussion and have it in a, in, in a way where we're not talking about, um, you know, uh, police equipment, we're talking about policing in general and how we want our police to relate to us. And how do we build that bridge now and not have it be around a particular vote that we're taking or an incident that happens in the community? And, and I think building that relationship <coughs> is really what it's about. That um, that's, that's where the work that needs to be done. So uh, I don't know if that conversation can start here or one of the other committees, but somehow the, within the committee structure would, would seem to be a good place to have that. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to push off a hard conversation from this committee. I mean, it's actually, I was just looking at the city services description while you were speaking, and I think it used to have public safety in there, but it was removed in our last go around, is that right? I don't think it's it was not removed, but public safety was folded into city services, and I think the police were specifically named as one of the issues that city services would hold. Right, right. but as now, currently, Currently in the rules, under city services, it says the jurisdiction is just matters related to the activities and operation of municipal government. Oh, so that's it's right. So it's become that, very broad. It, that totally it doesn't specifically. Yeah, it's much broader than us, which names multiple yeah. um, areas. So does municipal government mean municipal departments, in other words? I think. I mean, I still think that it falls more under city services. Mm -hmm. um, but you could make an argument that the community aspect. Yeah. Well, I, I want to add, if, you, if I can add one more thing. So I, I went to a, um, a symposium about a month and a half ago down at HCC, um, and it was uh, community policing and communities of color. And it was, the, they had a panel of, you know, the DA was there, they had people from various police departments, and then they had another panel of community leaders who are working with the community and, and the struggle. And that, you know, that panel could speak to us. The other panel, the first panel, with the police and the DA could speak to uh, city services. Um, what was interesting about it was that we were all in the same room having the same discussion. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it was, yeah, it, it was, it was, 
it was I was like on a buck in Bronco, <laughs> you know, trying to follow all of the you know the the charged um, a conversation that was going on. And our DA was there, and so was our police chief was there to be part of that conversation. So, um, but I think more of that conversation would be really helpful. Um, you know, maybe we have our own symposium. I don't know, but I, I just think that I much rather have that in in this type of venue than than having it when we're trying to you know consider a single piece of legislation that um, that gets all tied up with all of the stuff and um, so there you go I'm done I said it. <laughs> okay. yes well just to add one more wrinkle to this um, one of the reasons that some of us Develop this little experiment that we talk about Campy Connects is to have community conversations not in the context of specific pending legislation or resolution, but prior to the point it gets to that. And there has been some conversation about uh, uh, some kind of community conversation co hosted by the Truth School and North Campy Connects about community policing mm -hmm. with the chief and others. So that's, that's in the works too. Mm -hmm. And the, the larger question there is, if committees of city council were prepared to do more of those sorts of conversations, mm -hmm. then maybe they don't have to happen outside. Yeah. But like I said, I mean, it's just, it's all, it's all part of in the mix. Yeah, I mean, I think different com conversations in different in varied venues are also helpful. I mean, I feel like we heard from people, and I think, you know, as we had, as the conversation um, took multiple weeks and people became more comfortable, but I've certainly heard from people that they they don't necessarily feel like it's a conversation when they come to a podium and say something to us and we're here behind this desk. So I'm not sure if this is the best venue for some conversations too, or it, particularly if it's gonna be the only venue. thoughts or should we talk about next steps for what we've I have one more, one more quick yeah. question just reading this again as we're sitting here the um, second clause in the committee on community resources piece says the committee may review and make recommendations on licenses and permits mm -hmm. so that's something that we've never oh done, really except for the tax <laughs> yeah. but licenses and permits I think might mean like when people are applying for the ones that the council actually has jurisdiction over, like used clothing, second hand, right. and fireworks. Like that. But is that, and fireworks? Is that, I mean, is that something that's even relevant? Are we ever going to actually engage with those kinds of things? We haven't, except really around the taxis. Um, and I sort of shudder to say it, but there's a, uh, I've heard that there's a potential other issue with the change in the tax ordinance. Again, it's on the agenda, so I don't want to go into it. But um, if it does need to have further discussion, we can bring it here. Please. Yeah. It's going to outlive the on council. <laughs> That's all. Uh, an example of a, of a permitting issue that does have larger implications. Um, when there, there's, as there should be, a very extensive review and permitting process when there's new underground gasoline tanks as part of the new gas station. Like, uh -huh, right. There has been recently. Right, uh -huh. And my recollection is that that came to council, um, but I don't know that it was really edited in any way in any right. committee before that. That's one of those that's a little bit different than. Yeah, second that might have been a missed opportunity. There, yeah. there's, 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 there's very large community interest in that and public right. safety issues. And there are, are, are some of those permitting matters that we probably would want to grapple with. Okay, let's keep an eye open for those. Then. There you go. <laughs> I had an alert that there's a ten tornado warning until 6.15. Oh. And 
it said take shelter. <laughs> hmm? Warning, not uh, watch, huh? Really? Where did it go? Well, when? Darn this. started buzzing at the same time I knew it was some kind of emergency alert. I didn't get one. No. Are you not on the emergency system? They, they actually stagger them. Um, they that's true. That's true. They can't move. Jim and I both went off. You saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. Before I lost it, because I go, how do I, where would the alerts be? It's a text. Is that what it is? Probably your text. Oh, Ooh, tornado warning in this area till 6.15 p.m. Take shelter now. <laughs> Check local. See, I wasn't making it up. Yeah, I'll tell you all if I see it coming. Yeah. Emergency yeah. alerts still. You look out this way, I'll look out that one. One minute ago, so my yeah. dog is freaking out. Oh. Every time there's thunder, that's all I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so any other any other ideas? And then if not, um, should we talk about next steps? Is there something at this this list that we come up with? Is there something we want to tackle next month in July? I don't anticipate something will be referred to us. So I think we. Have a free and open agenda. Potentially the hunting thing, if we find out that they're going to be considering it in August or maybe in September. Okay. Can I just add something yeah, to that? Of course. I, because Kevin Blake is a good friend of mine and I'm seeing him tonight, I took the liberty of just texting him. And he says, the hearing not scheduled yet. Probably not till the fall. We have okay. three meetings between now and Labor Day, enough to discuss our approach and to make a plan, but not to do the research and hold the hearing. I guess it's like September, October. So, in other words, there would be time to confer with Constantin about is there room for doing something? John Lincoln. Okay. Um. So we're back to having a completely open agenda. Um. Since you said the mayor is meeting, there's tomorrow. There is a tomorrow morning. I'm gonna. Yeah, I would not normally have gone, but I'm, I'm kind of curious here about this. But again. Should be coming. Right. What's the open date again for the casino? It's got shifted a little bit. Are we still looking at September? September What's it called? The MGM September Springfield. Yeah. MGM Springfield. Yeah, that's what it was. But oh, now I'm getting all kinds of uh, cooking things in that casino. It's great. Yeah. Offers to help you with your game. August 24th. August oh, 24th. wow. Okay. So, so that's finally. How about for next month, I will contact the mayor's office and um, see if he will come and talk about what uh, what the consultant has come up with and what the marketing approach is going to be. Um, and then and I'll ask him to if there are any other department heads that he thinks, you know, could have something like a chair. Is there something more specific we want to ask? One of the things that's come up for me a couple of times in this conversation, the whole conversation, is there are also these kinds of things that would be more appropriate for the whole council, and I don't want, I don't expect that we're going to ask the mayor to come and talk to us and then also come and talk to the whole council. Why don't I ask And yes. so I think we have to just take that into consideration when we're asking for specific department heads or whatever, if it's an issue that the entire council would want to be updated on here so that we're not asking them to make two presentations. Okay, I will ask if he has a plan to present to the council. And if not, would he come here at July 16th? And we don't have a meeting in August, did we decide? <coughs> we, had, we had canceled the August meeting. Mm -hmm. Updates on local economic development, and it could be what you know. We've, we've got two additional trains a day um, running, and uh, that was one of those other things we read about in the paper. Oh yeah, <laughs> but um, 
might you know learn learn a little bit more about that and mm -hmm. how it's going to work what the, what the what the timing of it all is going to be and what are the expectations uh, in terms of passengers and economic development opportunity so i just wonder if, if casino north south rail um, encourages business owners to invest in employees and empower workers to make decisions in order to create a better environment for employees and consumers. I don't know more about it, but I'm interested in it and um, would like to look and see what what the details of it are and see if it's something that we might want to kind of bring to Western Massachusetts and kind of educate ourselves about and share with um, business owners if it's mm. something that we think is a useful model. <coughs> so that's one thing that I did. Okay. I have a couple more things, but I'm happy to see yeah, the floor. No, the, I was just going to, so the, the footnote says it's a PowerPoint that was presented. So I wonder um, if we could get a look at that project. Or even if there is some kind of more extensive thing. Right. This professor's created some kind of curriculum or whatever it might be. Okay. on page nine, under need for technical and financial assistance, the second paragraph I'm interested in. Um, it, it just speaks to how um, businesses are kind of repeatedly saying that all, all kinds of state funds that used to be available have essentially been pulled or uh, made smaller, and they're the kind of uh, funds that really help small businesses get off the ground. 
And you know, this is yet another one of those things that we at the local level are kind of um, faced with. You know, we have very little power because this is uh, decisions made by the state and funding sources that the state previously supplied that they're not supplying. So I'm not sure if that would lead us to wanting as a committee to develop a resolution or uh, a letter or something like that um, to, to state to the state legislature um, encouraging them to think about that or to look at more deeply kind of into what how this how programs are funded defunded if there's anything we can do around that okay and then I think the last thing that I looked at was on page, or paid the most attention to was on page 10 under employee ownership program. It says that a food truck owner testified in Western Massachusetts that he'd like to convert an employee owner ownership business model to, in order to increase the earnings of his employees and to eventually kind of, I guess, um, nurture them into being people he can sell his business to and that um, assistance is needed to develop that kind of model. Which also reminded me about something that doesn't appear at all in this report is the co-op model, which has been pretty successful out here in Western Massachusetts, other parts of Massachusetts in particular, businesses that um, I think it kind of behooves us, if, if this is our purview to kind of look at, at um, retail establishments to look at models, ways in which uh, elected officials can actually help to promote co-op models and um, what kind of incentives there might be that we could actually even legislate maybe um, that could really promote a, a co-op model which is a really um, just a successful model in terms of all all people involved and floating all boats higher and um, we don't have to kind of talk about minimum wage questions the same way and all the things that kind of bog us down over and over again. So just exploring kind of this model that he suggests, but also a co-op model and what role we might be able to play with that. So those were just some of the takeaways. Oh, I have another one, but I feel like I've been talking way too much, so someone else talk. You're going to talk about the new page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for really doing what I asked, like really looking at it carefully. I really appreciate that. I'm serious. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I maybe could see us um, in the direction of a resolution encouraging technical homework, but I, th I, think, I, think, I think those are good points to, to highlight. Another, and my understanding is that this is really totally beyond us, but it is just so frustrating that uh, there, that the disparity between taxing and brick and mortar and e-retail mm -hmm. is still in place because of this Quill decision that's talked about here. And I don't think uh, a resolution saying we decry the Quill decision is going to do anything, but. Um, I, I'm not sure where within, I know there is an effort being made in, 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 in the state to come up with a different, come up with an interpretation of the phrase physical presence that would allow um, within the confines of the Quill decision, taxing of, of e-retail that um, clearly does a lot of business. So I don't know where to go with that. For me, and, and just talking to local retail folks, that's a, that's at the top of the list. Is mm -hmm. just a structural imbalance that they have to deal with all the time. Right. Folks come in and shop in the shop, and then go online, buy the same thing, and not pay the tax. Right. And um, boy, that's just that's just huge. And as I said, I don't know what we can do about it, but I think it's worth calling attention to and inquiring at what level in the state that is being fought, and is there anything we can do to bring encouragement to it. Right. You can just educate people about it. I bet a lot of people look yeah. at Yeah, yeah, something, yeah, you're right. Some of these things, just, yeah, that could be too. Just, just bringing to light a little bit more of what was, what was in here. The, the, the other 
and I hadn't realized this until somewhere in the last year. I mean, I'm 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 all for time and a half and double pay, but the fact that Massachusetts and Rhode Island alone, among all the states, by by law, have to pay, the, you know, regardless of other employment terms during the week, have to pay. Um, I don't know, it's time and a half or double time, just called premium pay here on Sundays. Uh, I, you, hear, you hear a lot of griping about that too, is that, you know, if, if you want to do it across the country, if you want to do it in, you want to do it in New Hampshire and New York and Vermont, great, but to, to, for Rhode Island and Massachusetts to still be the only states in the country operate under these ancient blue laws to provide a further competitive disadvantage. Um, it, it, to me, is, is really striking. And, and again, I'm not, don't know what there is to be done about it, although I assume it's within the purview of Massachusetts legislature to change it. Right. What would be the forces that would keep them from doing that? I mean, the workers? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know the political or legislative yeah. history. It's such here. a holdover from Catholic days. It, 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 it is. And I'm sure there are workers who structure their they they try and get those days to get higher wages. And For all I know, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I suppose I, I suppose if 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 you it's kind of built your right. your employment and your work week around. Yeah. I suppose it would be pushed back. But if you're running a store in competition with everybody else, then it's, it's just one of those other. No, oh, particularly if you're on the border. Yeah. Another state that's not Rhode Island. Yeah. That makes it a very hard thing. And is that a reason that a business would open up down in Connecticut as opposed to, you know, Massachusetts yeah. or Rhode Island because they wouldn't have that burden sort of, you know, discouraging retail you know, on some level? Yeah. Like Yes. So, um, yeah, on the uh, note of the, yeah, so the, the, the premium pay on Sundays, you know, so you're going up to twenty two fifty an hour. If we go up to the, if we get the $15 minimum wage, now you're talking twenty two fifty an hour for somebody who's working at a retailer downtown or working at Walmart or whatever. Um, and um, it does start to get into, it, you know, I mean that's that's a lot of money per hour for retail work. I'm sure businesses also make staffing. You know, they maybe they don't open on Sunday or they. Have there are I've heard folks say they 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 closed on Sunday. Right. Um, maybe it's a reason why a lot of businesses open later on Sunday, just those extra hours that they don't. They probably have they have less Close staff. Down. Sorry, did I interrupt you, Councilman? No, that's okay. And the other thing that stood out for me is that you know the the need for um, supporting retail that of uh, four uh, percent of the GDP is is from retailers, but it pays eleven percent of the employees in the state, and that you know that I mean. It, and if you look, I was looking at those graphs there, and they're almost the inverse, you know, like for finance, it employs just a little amount of people, but it's got this huge chunk of, you know, almost the same amount as retail. And um, so, um, so it, we really need to, you know, figure out ways to protect, you know, anytime we're considering new taxes for downtown or anything like that, we need to keep that in mind. Um, so that's what I got. All right. Anything? Anything else on this? Yeah. I have one more. Uh, oh, right. oh yeah. Point, oh, I which is the um, so the task force. Uh, this is on page fourteen. Uh, notes that low teen employment rates particularly impact low income families in Massachusetts. The wages of teen workers from low income families accounted for 17.7% of their family shared income, um, as opposed to average income families at 7.4%. So, 
so this is just this was interesting to me because we did have a couple of conversations um, was it in this committee I think in this committee but also the whole council about this idea of having a kind of gradiated wage based on age or something like that and um, some of us argued that there are families who are really dependent on the income of their teen workers and this really uh, not only affirms that but really shows that the people most impacted if those wages were to be lower for teenagers would be people who are already in uh, low income status. So um, I was glad to have that data right there like that. Yes, I agree. It was disproportionately affected by 10%, 10 so. Okay. Um, so anything else on this? So it sounds like just, you know, our continued exploration about what this committee does, actually this this report um, has potential for, for things that we can work on in the future. So mm -hmm. well uh, we should refer back to this list and um, and how about I will promise to look into the good job strategy and see if we can get a hold of the study and uh, what was shown to the task force. Um, I'll look look at the Quill decision and where where things stand and preparing an argument. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.